Hello, welcome to the Excel A to Z series, and today we're going to talk about the name box. Now, the name box is often overlooked, although, in my opinion, if something has this much real estate in Excel, it does deserve a second look. It's got to be important if it takes so much space in the Excel, you know, in the Excel window. And name box, it really is a gem. It does so many things. And let me just show you what it does. So right out of the gate, and this one you know, right? It shows me which cell is active. So if I start typing now, start typing, which cell am I typing in, right? That's what it tells me. That's cell C3. But then you can use the name box for other things. Now, one of them is moving around this vast sheets that Excel now has, right? More than a million rows, more than 16,000 columns. It's vast and you got to have a good way of, you know, uh, traveling this vast uh, landscape. And what you can do is you can go in here and do sort of a G8000, right? Notice how the G is small. It doesn't really matter. Enter. And now I'm in G8000. And if I wanted to go back up, I could do an A1 in here, or I'll just do Control Home, right? So I can move around with this. But then it goes a bit further, because I can also select. And I can select in two different ways. The first one is kind of the obvious one, right? I could go to the name box, and I could say something like A1 colon B10. And if I enter that, it's going to select from A1 to B10, so a common range, right? I could also go 1, column 12. So give me all the rows from 1 to 12. And sort of in the same manner, I could also go up here and do C, column H, right? So all the columns from C to H. And it would do that. So, and if I just wanted to select the C column, I would actually need to go C column C. Right? And if I only wanted to select, let's say the fourth row, I would go four column four, and it would select the fourth row. But then you can also do this. You can sort of combine the moving with the selecting. Let me explain. So if I got A1, right? So that's the active cell right now. And then I go in here and I write something like I15. But before I press enter, I also hold down the shift key. What's going to happen is it's now going to select all the cells from A1 to I15. That is very, very useful because you can also use that by just, you know, if I wanted to go from A1 to A50, right? I could go A1 column A50, but I could also go A1, and then I would do an A50 and hold down the shift and just press enter. It would do the same thing. Okay, another one I find extremely useful is this one. If I have, let's say, this selected, but now I want to add columns E and F to this selection, I could go up here and write E column F, but before I press enter, I hold down the control key. Enter, and there it is. And now I could also add to this selection, let's say H6 to I10. Press control, enter, and there it is. And now I could also add 13, rows 13 and 14, simply by saying 13 column 14, hold down control, enter, and there it is. Right? So I can just add to this selection by holding the control key. But then you could also do that simply by, so instead of the shift key, you could select A1, you could press F8. And what you do is you turn on the extend selection mode, right? If I now click anywhere, it's going to do this. But I could also 
you know, still be in A1, got the extend selection turned on, I could just go here and say I15, enter. Without holding the shift key, it's still going to do that, right? So I'm going to escape out of this one, and then I'm going to, let's say, select this, but then I'm going to do shift F8. Now what this one does, this one turns on add or remove selection. It's kind of like holding down the control key. And now I could go here and I could say E, column E. So select the E column and it does so, but it just adds it to my selection. I can now say, let's do 12, column 14. Okay. And then I could also say, and now add H4. There it is. Right. And until I have this one turned on, I could just add, add, add. Of course, I could also just be clicking, right? But I could also be doing with the name box. And that's a cool thing. Okay. Now here's another thing the name box does. And this one is cool. So you know how it's always showing you where you are, right? But if you start typing a function, now it's actually saying, which function do you want to nest inside your sum function? And usually that wouldn't be a sum the nesting one, it would be sort of an if kind of thing. And then you go if, and now I want to nest my and, right? So now I have if of and, right? And now I could go if this is greater than 12 and so on and so on. And then I press here and I nested the and function into my if, right? So I could also use the name box to nest and all I need to do is to start typing and it, the equal sign and it changes, you see? Now it's just saying, well, which function do you want? Which function do you need? And I go, I need an if. And now I got the if and I'll say, but now I need the end. And now I got the end and I'll say, but now I need another if, right? And I'm just nesting my functions. That's a cool thing. And then you can also do this. You can also, and that's, of course, that's why it's called the name box. You can also give names to cells or ranges. And the idea is, if you have something, let's go back to G8000, right? And let me also tell you something that, it, that is kind of important here. Um, we're now going to start naming things in Excel, right? And the way you would name something is you select a cell, you go up here, and you say my cell. Now, as far as the names go, the only thing you really need to make sure of, there should be no spaces, right? So if I wanted this to be my cell with a sort of like a space, I would need to go my and then an underscore or something. Um, but usually I would just go camel case. So my cell like this, press enter. And now I named this cell. And the ability that the name box gives you to name things, it's also kind of a double-edged sword because remember when I said you can use this to move around. So you can go A1, enter, and it moves you to A1. But what if I make a mistake? What if I go up here and I really wanted to go to, let's say, E100, but instead of that, I write E and something goes terribly wrong, and now I go 100 press enter. Now that's not, you know, that's not a cell reference, but still what it thinks I'm trying to do is name this cell. And that's why it remembered the name. It didn't say there's something wrong. Whereas if for moving around, I was using F5 or control G, right? And if I try to type something weird in here, it would say, now look, that's just not going to happen. Uh, that's not a reference I can move you to. So you should be aware of that, right? You should be aware that that's something that can happen. Okay, so now I have this name and I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to go formulas, name manager, find this one and say delete. But then I also have a name that actually makes sense. It's my cell, right? Now, how can I move to my cell? Well, what I do is I go to the drop down within my name box and that one holds all my tables and all my named ranges or cells, right? So I can just go, yeah, my cell, that's it, right? 
And this one is called my cell. And if I now go like this, right? So if I put something in there and then go back home, and now over here, I try to do equals my cell, I can do it, right? Because I gave it a name and I could also go equals my cell times five, let's say, right? So I can use that within any formula now. And I could also name ranges, right? If I have, let's say if I had this, I can call this data, enter. I just named this range. What can I do now? Well, now from any sheet within this workbook, I can just go equals sum of data. And there it is. That's the sum of those 12s. Right? And what I could also do, go to the name box and say, well, move me to data. Right? And it does so. So name box, I can use it to name things. And that's, of course, that's what it it's called the name box, right? It's showing you the name of whatever is selected. And it's this one is called data. Right? And that is extremely useful. Okay, now let me show you a very weird thing that name box does. So the name box, you can use it to select, right? And if I wanted to select cells from, let's say, A1 to F3, what I would do is I would go up here and do A1 colon F3. Three, right? Nothing special there. Enter, there it is. But then you could also do the column lying down, sorry. So I could do this, a1 dot dot f. Now I'm not going to do f3 because it's already selected, so you wouldn't actually see it. So let's do e6, e6, enter, and it's acting as if that column is like this, right? Now this, I've been told, is something left over from Lotus, uh, but, but I found it extremely, uh, you know, <laughs> extremely funny when I first uh, found out about this. It was actually in a basic course that I did. So I was, you know, giving a basic Excel course. And this lady says, well, uh, what I was talking about is how you can use the name box to select, right? You go A1 colon, right? And she goes, oh, but you can also do the colon lying down. And I go, no, no, that's not a thing, but it was, right? So it just goes to show you, nobody knows everything about Excel and we can always learn. Okay, so that was the A to Z video about the name box. Now, of course, about the names, where you should be naming things would probably be formulas name manager, right? This one does that a bit better. And particularly if you have something like this. So if I have ID name and let's say number, and then let's just do something very fast. So let's do Jasper, Tristan and Clara. And then over here, let's give it some numbers. So something, something, something. And now I can select this and I can just go, you know what? I want you to create names from selection. And the names, you should read them from the top row. You go, okay. And I just created ID. I just created name and I just created number, right? So, you know, with the names, the name box is a way to go, but sometimes you should also know the defined names, um, particularly because it has the name manager where all of these names, you can actually manage them, edit them, delete them, because you cannot edit a name up here, right? I have the ID name and I cannot edit it in here. If I now think, oh, I'm going to call this ID 231, F, right, enter, I didn't change the name. I just added a new name that now also exists in the same space. So the name manager, you should always know that one, but the name box with its drop down and everything it does, extremely, extremely useful tool in Excel. Okay, hope you enjoyed this one. If I forgot anything, because it should be an A to Z, right? 
please write in the comments below. If you learned something new, please let me know in the comments below. And that's it for this one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.